I am back! After two weeks of exam hell, finally I can go back to making videos again. And I wanna say thank you to you all for getting the channel to 300 subscribers. We are getting ever so close to that big 500, which allows me to do some exciting community posts. With that aside, there have been a lot of things happening in Ark Knights in the past two weeks. The dorm contest ended, there was preluding lights, which I didn't make a video of it because I had no time, and there's also Cytus 2 collab, which I think is still going, and now the Toilet of Olomon rerun. Speaking of TOW, we're gonna take a closer look at the skins for this event, as well as three crossover skins that came before it. If you are new to this channel, this video is part of the series that I call To Buy or Not To Buy, where I review skins as they come out, help you choose the ones that you want to buy. Before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you find it useful. The first up is Fallenic, which I did not expect, but it's a very nice surprise because the art is amazing. Although this is just a 15 OP skin, I think the art itself is worth it. Something about the grey colors from the trees and her outfit gives that mystery feeling and the red flowers add more color to the overall gray tone. And the best part is, Falonik looks cute in a ponytail. What more can you ask? Mastyama has a lot of mysteries surrounding her, and I see people use this image to justify that Mastyama has godly powers, which is reasonable. This skin shows that Mastyama is the Warden of Time, just like a certain VTuber. They both have clock arms as weapons, but Mastyama has the ability to control space as she is able to open a portal to the underworld, letting out those miserable souls to the mortal world. If you look carefully, you can see that her wings are in good condition, which suggests that this is a snapshot of her in the past. That's all I'm gonna say about her lore, you can take it from here. Anyway, this skin looks awesome, and the blue tint contrasts really well with the purple. Her outfit makes her look like she's part of a religious organization, like maybe a church, and even the guys in the back looks very sus. Astesia is the epitome of elegance. If you don't believe me, just look at her two skins. But for this video, we'll just focus on her Star Seeker skin. This skin expands on her backstory as an astrologist. She has her telescope, there's two globes, and a star map. I don't know why, but her dress reminds me of Violet Evergarden. Maybe because the design looks like it was from the Victorian era, which I think is around the same time period in Violet Evergarden. And what can you not like about this skin? It's Astesia. She looks beautiful in that dress. Imagine yourself in the same room, and watch the stars as the night passes. Wouldn't that be great? Well, that's all three skins for the Twilight of Volumon rerun, and now I want to take a closer look at the three skins that came out before the event, which was a collaboration with Undergarden. At the time of recording, there's only a few days left, so you better be quick. First up is Zima, and her skin has a vintage style to it thanks to that cassette player she has, and those bulky computers. If you don't know what those computers are for, well, she uses it to bonk enemies because why not? Those things weigh probably a ton. If that's not weird enough, she stacks those bricks on top of her head and does a Russian dance, and it's freaking hilarious. Thorn's skin looks simple, yet he got some serious drip. His giant sword looks slightly out of place, but at least the design has been simplified a little bit to match the style of the clothes. While I was looking through the animation, I noticed him using what looks to be a paper shopping bags as his secondary weapon. This man is dangerous. If someone can turn anything into weapon, then you better run. Oh. My. Sartre! That's hot. Literally. And figuratively. I think what makes her look hot is that side ponytail, and she just seems more casual. I don't know why she has a skateboard, because you don't normally skateboard with a skirt. It seems so inconvenient. I like the small onomatopoeia text that pops up after her attack, and I like that she's smiling all the time in her sprite form. It looks like she's having fun, except maybe skill 3, because that one, she looks like a psychopath. One final note, the clothes that Surter and Thorns are wearing were actual products that you were able to purchase in Undergarden store. The keyword here is were because I cannot find them on their website, so I don't know if you can still buy them. Out of all these 6 skins, the ones that I bought were Falanik's Lasting Arrow Root because of the art, Astesia's Star Seeker, and Thorns Komodo. Well, that's all for this video. And let me know in the comments below which one of these skins do you want to buy, if you have infinite money. Don't forget to check out the to buy or not to buy series, and I'll see you in the next video.